Hey, what is up guys and welcome to RPN Hardware. In this video, I'm going to show you guys the best budget 1080p and 4040p upgradable gaming PC that you can put together right now in 2021. Let's get it. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys step by step how to put together this entire $750 gaming and streaming PC, showing you guys all PC parts before booting up the system, testing out the gaming performance in both 1080 and 1440p resolution at high to ultra graphics in 18 of the most popular games right now. All PC components you see in the video are linked up in the video description down below. Alright, so let's get started, let's go ahead and get the motherboard out of the box. Currently sitting at $65, the Gigabyte B450M is one of the best budget micro ATX motherboards for the Ryzen platform. Now MATX motherboards are a bit smaller and are usually a bit cheaper than the, you know, the bigger one, uh, the standard ATX motherboards. They still whoever delivers the same performance like the bigger ones but for a much lower price tag. Anyway, before installing the CPU, let's go ahead and get rid of these two CPU cooler holders. Alright, so time to unbox the CPU guys. This is the Ryzen 5 3600. This is a 6 core 12 thread CPU with a 3.6 GHz base clock and a 4.2 GHz boost clock. Now in today's build, we're gonna use the cooler that comes included in the box. You can obviously spend a few extra dollars on an off-the-market cooler, but yeah, throughout my testing, the included cooler has no problem cooling our CPU. Now, as can be seen, the 6 core 3600 delivers great gaming performance thanks to its high core count and thread count, making it an excellent budget pick for any gaming and streaming PC build in 2021. Now, to install the CPU, we need to match up the triangle located at the lower left side corner of the CPU with a triangle located on the motherboard, lift up the lever, Line up the triangles and gently place the CPU in the socket just like so. Then lower the lever and the CPU is installed. Next up, let's go ahead and get the CPU cooler ready for installation and the installment process is very easy and pretty straightforward. Make sure that the four spring screws align with the screw holes on the motherboard backplate. Then carefully tighten the cooler down in a pattern like so until you're feeling resistance. Then you want to take the CPU fan cable and this should be plugged into the CPU fan header on the motherboard that we find at the top corner. Next up is going to be RAM guys and this is one of the most popular DDR4 kits from Corsair called Vengeance LPX. This is a 2x8GB kit so we're looking at 16GB in total. With a price tag of $88 there are a few kits currently selling for a bit cheaper and if you're interested yeah you'll find the best current DDR4 deal linked up down below. Next up is the SSD or storage and for this step we're gonna need the SSD and the screw which we find inside the motherboard box. Now, I'll link up the best current M.2 deal down below but I've been using this unit from Kingston for most of my PC builds with great success and this is a high quality and budget friendly M.2 that speeds up the loading screen by a flip and turn compared to a traditional hard drive and SSD. Now the M.2 easily slides into its socket and will be fastened into place using the M.2 screw. Now that we are done with our motherboard, let's go ahead and prepare our case. This is the Voidex from Colink, a case that I've been wanting to build in for quite a while now. 
It comes with a single 120 fan at the rear and a massive infinity mirror at the front. Accented by a pair of ARGB strips, it can easily be addressed and customized through the button at the front. I was a bit worried about you know, high CPU and GPU temperatures, but I can assure you guys that you don't have to worry about thermal throttling. And I should say that there is plenty of room to add extra fans here, up to 5 in total. You can fit 2 at the front and an additional 3 at the roof if you want. Now it is time to take off the side panel of the case, and we do so by unscrewing the thumb screws on the back of the case. And before we install the motherboard, don't forget the motherboard I.O. shield. And this should be inside the motherboard box. And it should be installed from the inside of the case with these circular ports located at the bottom. A few so-called motherboard standoffs also needs to be installed. And these are located inside the plastic bag that comes with the case. And with that installed, now we can go ahead and secure the motherboard using the screws that comes provided by Colink. Now guys, we are almost ready to install our power supply, but before we do that, let's go ahead and install the case cables. And this is to keep things simple and so that we don't have to worry about this stuff later. Anyway, let's start with the USB 3 and this is what this cable looks like. The connector is located down at the bottom of the motherboard. Moving on to the front audio and this cable is going to the left side corner. Next up we have this USB cable and this one goes to the bottom of the motherboard. And last but definitely not least we have the front panel connectors. This all goes to the right side corner. Alright, so grab the power supply, make sure that the fan is facing downwards, then put it in its slot and secure it. Now we're gonna do a few more cables guys before it is time to install our graphics. First up we got the 24 pin power and this one goes to the right side of the motherboard. Next up we have the 8 pin for our CPU and this one goes to the top left side corner. And lastly we have the SATA power connector and this is going to the ARGB controller we find at the back of the case. With that done guys it is time to present the graphics card. This is the GeForce GTX 1660. Now the model I'm demonstrating on is called Dual from Asus, but you can basically use whatever 1660 variant you want here. Anyway, the 1660 comes with 6GB of G5 memory, and thanks to the 1660 only consuming about 130 watts of power, it can run fairly cool and quiet, making it the perfect fit for today's PC build. Anyway, having a look at the 1660 performance stand against similarly priced uh, competitors, we see that this $219 GPU holds up great in today's modern games, making it the perfect pick for today's $750 US dollar budget PC. I would take a deeper look at the 18 game benchmark. Despite running most games at high to ultra graphics, the 1660 still holds up fantastic at 1080p resolution, but if you want to do 1440p, yeah, let's say you have a 1440p monitor, well it turns out that 1660 handles this resolution pretty damn alright as well. But yeah, everything isn't bells and whistles, availability is still very limited, but the situation is looking better every day. Anyway, plug in the graphics card and take this dual PCIe cable and plug it into our graphics. Just like so. Slap on the side panel and that's it guys, fire up the PC and let's take a greater look at some of the games tested at a deeper level. Now, assuming that the GPU prices keep falling, you should be able to pick up all parts for around $750. This is definitely one of the best priced performance gaming PCs out there right now. 
but let's look at some gameplay and first up we have the latest installment in the Resident Evil saga called Village starting at 1080p resolution and here I'm ended up putting the graphic settings to balance and let the game figure out the settings. Now, As we can see most settings are either set to high or turned on and the game is looking beautiful. Now with an average of 87 FPS, there is definitely room to higher the settings even more and still stay above 60 FPS. Also great news, even at 4040p the game runs without stutter with an average just over 60 FPS. Let's move on to Rust and let's start having a look at the settings, starting with 1080p and here I'm putting the graphics preset to 5. This gives us a frame rate of 70 to 80 and at 1440p we're looking at an average frame rate of around 50 to 60 FPS. Moving on to Days Gone, we're starting things with 1080p where I'm settling for the highest settings in the game. This gives us a frame rate of 80 FPS on average and about 65 FPS at 1% low, bumping the resolution to 1440p, almost 60 FPS on average and 1% low at around 45. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn and here I'm selecting uh, original graphics as the preset starting at 1080p here you can expect as much as 63 fps whereas in 1440p you will see around 48 fps on average Death Stranding is up next and as you guys can see with the graphics preset set to medium we can expect about 81 fps at 1080p. Moving on to 1440p you can expect as much as 55 fps with this PC. Let's move on to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and as always let's start having a look at 1080p. And here, yeah, yet again, we are seeing fairly high numbers. We're looking at 79 FPS at 1080p and about 52 FPS at 1440p. And looking at the settings, you guys can see that I'm going with high settings here. With that said, let's move on to a game that we know is a little bit more demanding. Now, here I'm going for medium settings at 1080p. And we're looking at low settings for 1440p. Now 1080p runs great and we're looking at 63 FPS here. At 1440p we're seeing about 51 FPS which is still very playable even though the game is looking a little bit flat at some places. Moving on to Hitman 3 and here I'm going for medium settings which results in an impressive 91 FPS at 1080p resolution and 66 FPS at 1440p. Again guys all PC components can be found linked up down below. If you enjoyed the video please drop a like and if you have any questions or comments be sure to drop them down below and I will try my best to get back at you as soon as possible. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.